Associate Administrator for Human Exploration Operations, Bill. Soyuz uh, on the pad, uh, ready to launch on November 14th. This will be the first launch of an American post shuttle. Your thoughts on the significance and how critical this time is uh, to uh, get the uh, station back to a six-person operation and uh, all the increment work that lies ahead. You know, as I, as I think about it, uh, you know, we've been flying on the Soyuz for a pretty extended period of time, even while the shuttle was flying. So I don't see it as a big difference, uh -huh. as this is the first uh, American post-shuttle to go fly. But but I still look at what the Russians are doing and getting the rocket ready to go fly after the progress failure, and they've done a tremendous job of really investigating and thoroughly understanding what's going on, and, and they're ready to go fly today. And it's. Uh, are really amazing to see the teams working here on the rocket, uh, getting it unbolted, getting it erected, uh, see the Russians going through step by step, getting the rocket prepared, and they're doing a great job today. So uh, I'm very impressed with what I see with the Russians and their teamwork and preparation for today. Only three months uh, have passed since the Progress accident. It was very aggressive uh, work that the Russians did to get into the posture that we're at today. Two launches and a landing now within a five-week period. Uh, your, your thoughts on uh, what this moment in time represents in terms of the, the aggressiveness of what uh, the Russians are attempting? Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, a pretty intense launch tempo they have planned for themselves here. But again, you know, I don't sense any rushing or anything being cut in terms of uh, preparation and preparedness again the Russians are very methodical moving forward kind of step by step and you know even as they prepare the rocket today and they do the unbolting and they do the hydraulic lifts and they do the activities they're pretty pretty standard pretty step by step just kind of moving forward making steady progress Mike Fossum and his crew on orbit 
had a slightly different increment over the past three months than they had bargained for. Dan Burbank is slightly shorter increment now for he and his crewmates coming up. How critical and difficult will this period and quick transition be from one crew to the next? Again, the, the things that you don't get to see is how much preparation went into this handover period. You know, there's about four days when they'll actually get a chance to hand over from one crew to the next. But they've done a lot of preparation on orbit. They, you know, Mike Fossum downlinked some uh, high definition video to the crew so they could actually see what it's going to be like to be on board space station. They, they showed them some things that they're going to have to do in terms of maintenance to get prepared. So where the normal handover would have been more face to face, they actually did some of it remotely by planning ahead and working with the mission operations team to be prepared. So, you know, it looks easy when you, we see it from the outside and see it get executed. But if you look behind the scenes and you see all the preparation and the thought that went into this to make it work that smooth, that's a testimony to what we're really doing to get prepared. So this extra preparation they did, the extra crew conferences, the extra talking back and forth have been tremendously helpful and, and should set us well to be ready for this uh, pretty short handover period between the two crews. Bill, the um, 2011 represented the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight. As the year ends and you move into a new year here, between utilization and the advent of commercial vehicles standing in the wings, basically, ready to come online to service the station, how do you view this transitional period away from shuttle into how the future is going to work? You know, again, we've done a lot of preparation to get ready for this period to, to transition away from shuttle into the into the next period of commercial cargo, and 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 I think again we're prepared. You know, we we we're, you know we may get surprised, but but we're ready to move forward. Uh, there's also a tremendous amount of research going on on board space station. You know, every day I look at the status reports and. There's probably five or six scientific investigations being done every day on board space station. So this period of time with the three crew, they've done a tremendous job of actually doing some really quality research. You know, some of the combustion experiments that, that Mike Fossum have been looking at have yielded some really amazing results. We see some things with, uh, we're actually burning some uh, heptane uh, propellant uh, in space. We actually see how that performs in uh, in the, the microgravity period of space with no convection, and and it's amazing. And the researchers are very intrigued by the results they're seeing. So I think the the thing that, that most folks don't get a chance to see is how much real research and scientific investigations are getting done during this period. And and it's a real tribute to Mike and the, and the crew on orbit that they were able to do this with a pretty reduced. Uh, crew size and a very different schedule than they had planned. But again, by being adaptable, being flexible, and being prepared, they were able to really make it look very smooth. Finally, how complex will this time frame and this increment be for Dan Burbank and a month from now and Don Pettit launches uh, to join him with his crew? Again, overall, a, a pretty dynamic period in terms of launches and vehicles coming up. You know, we have the automated transfer vehicle uh, scheduled for next March uh, launch. We have the commercial cargo guys coming online uh, pretty soon. Uh, just a very, very busy period. So, again, I think the thing we learn is to be prepared, to be flexible, to be agile, to be ready to change. And, and as life plays a slightly different scenario than you thought or things don't work exactly right, if you've got that right mental attitude and you've been prepared, you're ready to adapt. It looks seamless. It looks like you're ready and nothing really happened. But in reality, it's a, it's a tribute to the preparation and the thought that goes into this. And, and again, I can't say enough about the Russian preparation for this launch. They've, they've done a great job of being prepared. They've looked at everything thoroughly. They're ready to go into this period. It, it's an exciting time watching this transition and start to see this kind of new phase of space flight uh, as we move forward.